This monstrosity is a project for another video, but while I assemble it, I thought I would talk y'all through how knitting machines work and why there hasn't been a second garter carriage blanket video yet. When I bought my 910, it came with a bunch of extra stuff. When people give up machine knitting, they tend to give it up all at once. So when you buy knitting machines off secondhand marketplaces like Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, you often get things bundled together. And one of the things that came with my 910 was a garter carriage. And I'd purchased this machine with the intention of getting it up and working with a YAB because I'm an engineer and my hobbies tend to revolve around software and hardware. It's just one of the perils of the profession. I looked through the AYAB bugs and saw that somebody had filed a ticket asking for support for the garter carriage. And I looked at the code and thought that it's something that I should be able to do. I got set up with the code base and I figured out how to detect the carriage and I submitted that code and decided that I would come back later and fix the little alignment issues that I was seeing and make it actually work well. I went back to the code a couple weeks ago and fixed my alignment issues and then started trying to make a swatch for a blanket. And that's when I found this pretty major bug. Let's talk through how AYAB works and how knitting machines work. AYAB is open source hardware and open source software to control these old brother knitting machines by computer instead of with the button interface that they had before. And the big selling point of AYAB is that you can knit pretty much anything. Like the old machines, you had 24 pixels of repeat and you could only do a pattern that was 24 pixels wide and you couldn't like change where it was centered. You just got what you got. But with AYAB, you can make every single thing different and you can have repeats that are longer or shorter than 24 pixels. Let's explain how it works. It's an Arduino, which is an 8-bit microcontroller. And on top of that, it's a shield which just routes all of the inputs from the cables on the knitting machine to the Arduino so that we can check the values and set values. And the way that it works is when the carriage passes the turn mark, which is just a Hall effect sensor, it senses magnets, the code on the Arduino checks a bunch of those sensor values and says like, hey, you probably have this carriage, hey, you're at this position on the belt, and a few other things. And then once it senses that you started, it talks to the desktop app and asks for the next row of pixels, essentially which needles need to be set. Then it starts listening to the clock line. It's not actually a clock line, it's just a value that goes high and low as the carriage moves across the bed. For every needle, we get a notification that like, hey, you've moved one space, through something called a service interrupt. We register a service interrupt on the clock line saying to the Arduino, when this value changes, let me know. And that value changes every time the carriage moves one needle to the right or to the left. Then we can check the values, we can update where you are on the bed, and we can set the next pixel that needs to be selected. And then when you get to the end of the working needles, it senses that you've gotten to the end and it asks the desktop app for the next row of pixels and then it goes through the process again. What's happening with this bug is that the whole frame of reference gets shifted to the right the longer you're knitting. So as you're knitting every few rows, the software thinks that you're further and further to the right so the turnarounds get moved further out and it doesn't set all the pixels correctly. But as I was testing this with the garter carriage, the pixels were still mostly correct, like the needle selection was still mostly correct. And it looked like kind of error corrected to me, which didn't make any sense from the code that I had seen. And then I went to a local meetup. I've been working with these electronic machines for a while now. I had never played with a punch card machine, but at my local meetup, somebody brought in a 260 which is the bulky version. 
of the Brother Knitting Machine that is punch card controlled. And oh my god, these machines are beautiful. It's entirely mechanical, no power needed, and it moves quickly and it's always correct and it was just beautiful. And then the owner of this machine walked me through how they actually work. The way that needle selection is done is a mechanism under the bed of the needles. They are these long metal strips with nubbies that stick up. And the way that a needle gets selected is the nubbies get moved into place so the needle can't be forced down. And that forces it through a different part of the carriage and forces it out so it gets selected. So these, these long strips of metal under the bed have nubbies every repeat. So when you set any eight pixels, you're setting all repeats at once. When you set needle number one to a certain value, you're also setting needle number nine and needle number 17. So you're setting them in groups, in groups of eight, and that's how you get the repeating patterns. Despite the fact that with AYAB, my frame of reference was shifting over, some of those pixels were still correct because it's not just like pixel 17 that we're setting, it's pixel 17 and pixel nine and pixel one. So what I think is happening is that we're losing some service interrupts. So when we said to the Arduino, hey, let me know when this value changes, it can't always tell us because Arduinos aren't multi-threaded. They're really basic microcontrollers. What I think is happening is when we go to fetch the next row of pixels from the desktop software, it's taking up too much time and then the Arduino can't tell us when this value is changing because the carriage is still moving, but the Arduino is busy processing the next row of pixels. So it loses some information. Like a couple of these things get sent and we never see them because the Arduino is too busy. On Arduinos, there is some queuing of service interrupts, but only one of each type of service interrupt. So we could miss like three or four of these calls and only wind up um, getting one of them back through the queuing. So we lose that update about where the carriage is moving and we don't know that it's not where we think it is. I need to fix this bug before I can make a blanket. <laughs> and it feels a little ridiculous because like I need to write a bunch of code before I can knit a blanket, but hey, that's cool. I think there are more efficient ways to handle the pixels. I think there are more efficient ways to handle the turnaround. I think there are more efficient ways to set the correct needles as selected. And I'm just going to have to work through those options and see if any of them make this problem any better. And the alternative, if none of that works, is to look at other platforms. And by that, I mean look at other things, other hobby hardware platforms that are to start off with pin compatible with the Arduino so that I can just swap them out because there are more powerful, not even microcontrollers, but like full-blown computers and full-blown dev boards that fit into the same footprint and have the same pins. And I could port the AYAB code to that and see how it goes. I don't know if I would release that to the world or if it would just be like a fun project for me though. So that's why there hasn't been another garter carriage video, and that's why I haven't released my 270 video. I found a bulky electronic machine from Brother that already had partial support in the code base, and I went through and added the carriage detection, but it's having the same problem with the drift, where the frame of reference gets out of sync. The interesting thing is, because AYAB was built kind of specifically for the two and three color jacquard, this is not a problem in two and three color jacquard because we know when the carriage crosses the turn mark, we know exactly where it is. So we can reset all of its values. And when you're doing two and three color jacquard, you're always heading back to the left to, to the color changer to pick up your next color. So the carriage is always crossing the turn mark and it only has like two rows to get out of sync. It might only be off by a couple needles before it gets back in sync, before we reset its position. But with the garter carriage, 
it may never cross the turn mark again in regular use. It crosses the turn mark once, it gets started, and then because it's walking back and forth by itself, if it's in the middle of the bed, the magnets may never cross the turn mark again, and it will never reset its state or its location. The drift gets worse over time. I forgot to film an outro before. All of the images in this video came from the Knitting Machine Service Manuals. I'll put links to those below. If you want to follow me on GitHub for the latest updates on the code for this, there'll be a link for that too. If you want to check out the garter carriage video, there's a link for that as well. And subscribe for more updates. I will get around to fixing this. Do not underestimate my desire to make super weird sweaters. It's gonna happen. Happy knitting.